This is Twit. Mm. Um, last year, sometime Microsoft announced something called Microsoft Copilot for Security. Yeah, first it was Security Copilot, then it was Copilot for Security. Yeah, my comment at the time was, uh, why don't you just make your products all secure? We don't need this. And they were like, no, how's an idea? Why don't we make six or 15 of them? And so now it's called Microsoft Security Copilot. Right. And it is actually a suite of AI agents. Mm -hmm. Uh, Microsoft made six of them. Uh, Its partners made five of them. And I think that's all I'm going to say about this because seriously, dear God, Microsoft. No, it's um, gonna it's gonna continue. I've talked to other teams now. Like, yeah. each team contributes into this space, and uh, they. Yep. I got to say, from an administrative perspective, this is really interesting because most admins aren't full time security people and don't have a full time security person. They put on the tinfoil hat once a no, month. I, I, yeah, no, you're 100 percent right. I, the, the, uh, Leo said something earlier, and I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it, it was, and I said, well, we're going to talk about this kind of thing later. And it was, it was something mm-hmm. about writing an AI. And I, and I think part of the, the resistance to AI is that people have these kind of, you know, the egos about, and they're, they're like, I am, I am the person that does the writing if I'm a writer or the coding if I'm a coder or mm-hmm. the admining if I'm an ad, whatever. Oh. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that word is. Uh, but yeah, the truth is we're all good at things and we're all not so good at other things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if you kind of accept the notion, I think it's correct that AI ultimately will save you time. Yep. You know, how about using it to save time doing something either that you cannot stand doing or you're not good at or whatever it is. And so, uh, yes, in this case, um, in the same way that you would go into the, the cursor AI editor and say, examine my code base. And uh, tell me where I could improve the code quality or reduce redundancy or whatever it might be. You could do that with security. Look at my environment and then have it come back and say, okay, well, Bob over there doesn't have 2FA going or, you know, whatever it might be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, well, and and we've done this show on run ads where it's exactly that. What's the most pressing, you know, your view of my Azure tenant, what's my most pressing security risk? What should I address now? The, the most, basic and commonly said uh, thing about it and and this sort of work is these are people that want to be proactive but are always reactive because stuff Mm -hmm. happens they're in the pounding surf yeah and this is the type of thing it's not the only thing but is maybe a way to get to that ideal Mm -hmm. where the stuff that's hard or bad or maybe is lurking in the background you don't even know about whatever it might be that might later cause that reactive thing yeah is something that AI could help you with. Yeah, you, know? they, they, you do a bit, uh, you get a little bit of time to do a little bit of preventative work. And mm-hmm. the fact this tool would help you focus in on the best preventative work you could do. Right. So maybe the pounding yes. surf subsides a bit and you have a little more time. Yeah, so the, the non-AI version of this that I think anyone, if anyone has ever done or is right now doing any kind of admin IT pro type work is the, the best practices, um, work that Microsoft used to build into its management consoles and probably Mm -hmm. still does, right? So you have this kind of list of things that you can go through manually and say, well, okay, is everyone get to a van? You're like, Mm -hmm. green, but you know, you know, but now this is something that will do it for you. And uh, not, not that it will necessarily set everything correctly, but rather that it will come back with that report, like you were saying and say, look, this is what's wrong. You need to focus on this. (laughs) Like this is, this is job one, whatever that thing is. Um, Super helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause before, you know, the, then the pre best practices era, uh, era, <laughs> uh, Microsoft had best practices, but they were written in books or they were written in documents and, mm-hmm. you know, you would have to, as the admin, be like, all right, <laughs> you know, and then they built it in the product and now they're building it into AI and right now to, li- and in theory, although I haven't seen an example of this yet, but you're going to have a just do it button sooner or later, right? That it's going to say, Hey, right. you've not configured conditional access to restrict by geography. I'm going to just this whole do show, it. This whole show is going to culminate in my second app pick, which is what you just described, but for developers, <laughs> because one of the choices you get when you use Copilot, uh, GitHub Copilot or the uh, cursor AI, whatever it is, uh, is this rewrite this and then it shows it to you and you can look at it. Do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, most of the time you're going to be like, Oh, just do it. You, yep. I wrote this garbage and you made it look pretty <laughs> and small and it does the same thing. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yes. So I think you're right. I think you're, I think you're correct. Cause, and, and this, um, 
this is the hurdle. I think we all have to get over collectively, like whatever it is you're doing in life, like wherever you're at, no, you I, may think you know, I'm the guy. As the cloud came along, the guys who like spin and screwdrivers got really grumpy, but there were yeah. other things from the do. And as exchange online became obviously the better way to go and we moved all our work our exchange workloads so right. that those exchange guys are still working they're not doing the same job but they still take care of mail they just take care of it in a different way and actually arguably a better mail system as a consequence because they aren't wrestling with dax and and distribution blocks and all of those sorts of things that's already been dealt with yeah and if you were actually that exchange guy god help you um, you know, your life consisted of two to three year cycles where you spent that whole time doing whatever migration and fixing all the problems. And they were like, mm -hmm. oh, time to go to do, do it again. Now it's time <laughs> for know? the next version. Yeah. Uh, Thank God they're only know? every three years because that's yeah. how long it takes to get it stable. Exactly. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.